What's up with y'all? It's Top Media TV coming back at y'all with another video. Make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. So this is Sanyu Kashakul, aka Master Cody. You know, reflecting on his time that he had did with Suge Knight behind bars in Chino Prism in 97, where he had pressed Suge Knight about, you know, who had, you know, killed Tupac, which Suge Knight actually told him that it was Baby Lane. So Master Cody, you know, goes into details with his encounter with Suge Knight and how it went down while they was incarcerated together. So this is what Master Cody had to say, y'all. This is what I said to Suge as we ambled down the massive central corridor at the California Institute for Men in Chino. He and I both had our hands cuffed behind our backs as we were escorted by two correctional officers with, 20, with P-24 battle batons. Face the wall the jaw-headed correctional officer in army fatigues. Man, said Shug, this shit is hectic. Yeah, I responded, trailing behind his big frame. Welcome to the terror zone. The guards in Palm Hall don't wear the usual uniform. They floss around the block in army green jumpsuits. As the guards gear suggests, the hall has, has seen its share of warfare. It was under all this concrete steel and animosity that I had met Suge Knight. I reasoned that as a celebrity, he'd be held in PC, protective custody, just as Machiavelli, then known as Tupac Shakur, was in 95 at the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora, New York. Before my honorable discharge from the a Trey Gangster Crips, I had run, run up a karmic debt myself, which I repaid during many years behind bars, but the poetic justice of Suge's fate seemed even more profound. The last time I'd seen Machiavelli, aka Tupac, was in April of 96 during the video shoot for the X-rated version of How Do You Want It. I was on a run about to go back to prison for a parole violation and Machiavelli was blowing up but even then his stress was evident. We both had our demons. After Machiavelli was shot, I, pro I procured an avenue for news clippings to trickle in so I could keep up with the case. On hearing of his death, my first thought was that Sugar set him up. I had no evidence but had heard that a feud was brewing over contracts, including Tupac firing his lawyer David Kenner and his wanting to leave death row to start his own label. I read and reread all the news clippings about the shooting. Things kept fitting ill to me. I would read that he had no vest on and then saw a photo in Vibe to substantiate this fact. Yet in my experience, Machiavelli went nowhere without a vest or his heat and even if his killers were the Southside Crips with whom he supposedly fought that evening, why didn't the shooter dump on every car in the caravan? Shook's entourage was allegedly made up of top ranking Pyrus, so why would a Crip pass all up, up all those points to shoot someone who wasn't even a blood? These thoughts ran through my head before I even met the man, which is Shook Knight. In December 96, Shook came to Palm Hall as I predicted. On top of his never ha having been in prison despite his numerous convictions, Shook was staying in a hall where he would find it hard to breathe. I, kn I knew I'd be able to extract some inside information on Machiavelli's shooting. We'd never met on the streets, although our sets don't get along, we never had any combat because of the distance between South Central and Compton. Besides, we were both in our 30s and had no time for the red and blue rivalries. Out on the street, I heard that Suge was on some Pyro shit, but in here, neither his wealth nor my reputation mattered. We were equals and that's how I approached him. I knew that coming from LA County Jail, he would have nothing. I wrote him a brief letter introducing myself and explaining the politics of the whole. With the letter I included soap, deodorant, lotion and a few top ramen soups. I put all of this in a bag envelope and had it rushed to him. The next day, he replied. So this is Shug's reply, I guess, in a letter, you know, and this is what he had to say. A monster. Good looking out. I wish we could hook up on the streets, but it is never too late. My homeboy Pac had love for you, so you know how it go if he had love for somebody I did too. He told me he would have, have been playing you in your life story. When the time is right, we will talk. I couldn't believe it, says Monster. This man was the CEO of a $125 million company, yet his writing was no better, perhaps even worse and my seven-year-old sons. Perhaps the brother was just stressed out and wrote the letter in haste. I sent him a kite, a letter weighed, weighted with his soap and tied to a long strip of bedsheet that gets delivered by being thrown from cell to cell, acknowledging receipt of his note and the 
advising him to push the issue of going to gym pop, general population. The following day, he responded with a note that said I should let Death Row do the soundtrack for a movie about my life. The writing, like before, was in clumsy, stick fashion. Hey, also, Monster called his clown and Suge Knight for his writing, y'all, saying his writing ain't no better than his seven-year-old son. I mean, Suge Knight seems to graduate from high school, went to college. I don't see how his writing could be that bad. But um, like Monster Cody says, maybe the stress had got to him in prison where he couldn't even write correctly, you know. But um, I mean, I can understand he had just, you know, was sentenced to five years. I mean, you know, death row. He ain't going to see the streets again. He don't know what's going to happen to death row. Pac just got killed, so I can understand what's going on. But back to the interview, y'all. Before I'd be unarmed, I'm sure Shug had to go through the same routine. Lift your arms up, stick out your tongue, pull back your ears, lift up your nutsack, bend at the waist, spread your cheeks and cough, lift your right foot, now your left, any false teeth, dentures or partials, you either complied or never came out to sale. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, I saw Shug facing the wall to my left. I eased over to him. Noting his dimensions, 6 foot 4, 330 pounds, in case things got out of hand. What's up, homie? I was momentarily taken aback by his greeting. I expected a harsher, I'm Shug Knight type of response. I said I was well and I was just taking it one day at a time. We were escorted through two security doors and out into the law library, where we put in a grey telephone booth sized cages. After the cages were secured with Yale padlocks, the handcuffs were removed. Shug was in his cage, I was in Ma, a monster. I heard Geronimo Pratt was in there too, Shug said. Monster replies, Sh Geronimo Pratt left the same day Shug came. In fact, he had taken Geronimo's cell. It sort of irked me that he called me Monster after I had clearly signed each letter, Sanyika. What if I used his banging name and called him Sugar Bear? I asked how, was he, how he was doing so far. Man, I'm losing weight. I can't use no phone or get contact visits. And what's up with that tear they got me on? Fools be yelling and shit. Clearly he was going through it. They had no shoes to fit him. So his man from VNG, Vanessa Gangster Bloods, gave him some shower shoes. In return, he gave the guy a photo of a half-naked woman taken at Machiavelli's birthday party in Vegas. Shook's orange jumpsuit was two sizes too small. And on this day, he had only one side of his head shaved. Ain't that cold? That razor broke. I asked the police for another one, but they never came back. Plus, how am I supposed to have a shower in 10 minutes? I read your book, he said. I seen you and your family on that documentary. Your mom is a strong woman. I thanked him for the compliment, Master said, about his mom, and then asked him about Tupac. That's my best friend, Shook said, regarding Tupac. We go everywhere together. He started reminiscing about the wild times he and Pac had at Shug's Las Vegas nightclub. We used to close up 662 at 12, lock the doors, and give out, give out free drinks and just get our free cone. How was my beau, though? He was the happiest he'd, he said he's ever been. Did you see the lowrider I got him? No, I hadn't seen it, replied Master. Why all this talk about cars? Yeah, we just got one alike, 1961. He never drives it, though. We're gonna get that engine and all that chromed up. Why would you have his car? Master thought to himself. And why would he still be working on it now? Mine was racing. So y'all got some Lolos, huh? Oh yeah, Shug said. We got everything alike. The Jags, the Bentleys. We even had the contest to see who could get the most women to tattoo our name on them. He ch Master had chuckled at this. When we met the next week, Shug's jumpsuit was fitting slightly looser. No sooner had we made it through the door than the library clerk named Reverend Stern started yapping. Hey, I just saw you on the news this morning. Both Suge and I asked who. You, he answered, indicating Suge with a nod. Oh yeah? The DA says he's filing a three strikes case against you for an old assault charge. To this, Suge said nothing. What you think about that, asked Rev Stern. That's noting, replied Suge. Just the same old bullshit. I ain't worried. At first, they said it was because I felt I left the country. Then they said I had a dirty test. When that didn't work, they brought up the fight in Vegas. They just messed with me. Master had told Shug if, if Fetty, which is Tupac's mom, had gotten a $3 million royalty check from Inesco. No, nah, said Shug. I gave her that money. She got some lawyer who said he's been a friend of the family for 20 years. 
talking about Pac had a bad contract. That's rubbish. When he was on Interscope, he was only getting four points. I got him 18 points. And they talking about he was cheated. Pac was happy. You seen all his jewelry, right? Monster, listen. When I went out to New York to see Pac, he was stressed out. He wanted to get out of prison. Don't you know he told me that I could have all of his songs for $30,000 but I just got him out of jail? I told him no. To keep his songs, but I get him out. He said he always wanted to rock bands, so I got him one. Plus, I got his mother a house. I'll tell you this, homie. God don't like ugly. We all seen that black 500 drop top Mercedes Benz and the house. Not one vehicle. Not the Benz, the Jack, the Hummer. All the Lolo was in Machiavelli's name. Master would think to himself. All the jewelry, the limbo bills, and the hotel accommodations were stacked against Tupac like an advance. According to Suge, Tupac left owing him after $60 million worth of album sales in 96 alone. Imagine that. Impatiently, I asked about a shooting. Earlier that day, Suge said, dude snatched a necklace with the death row coat of arms. Pac was upset about that. You know how he gets. When it's on, it's on. And later that night, Pac sees fool. So we touched him up a bit, you know? Still didn't get that necklace though. Then we got on back to my spot, change and hang out a bit, trying to find some freaks to come to the club. Tyson had won a fight and we was going to celebrate, Shook said. Pac was tripping though. All that day, he was talking about how he never wanted to go back to prison. Never. Anyway, we rolling, everything is tight. We talking about this and that, when all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. We start taking heavy hits. I punch it, bust a U-turn, but I realize I got a flat tire. Then I see Pac is hit, but he's still talking like it ain't nothing. My head was bleeding. And Pac said I should be the one sweating it because I got shot in the head. Then the Vegas police came and came. Then the Vegas police came and drove down on us. They effing would shoot us up. We're trying to tell them that we the victims, but they make us get down on the ground anyway. You know who did it, Shook said. Them dudes that's catching hell right now. I knew he was talking about the Southside Crips monster would think to himself. In the days following Tupac's shooting, their hood was practically overrun by shooters. Yet his answer was insufficient and I pressed him again. Who specifically, who specifically dumped though? Master said, Baby Lame. Suge replied, meaning Orlando Anderson. So that was the interview between Master and Suge Knight. When they were well, not an interview, but you know, they was, you know, next to each other in Chino State Prison when they was incarcerated together. Monster had pressed him about who had dumped on Tupac, which Suge replied, it was Baby Lane. So um let me know about, you know, Baby Lane being interviewed by Monster and again Suge and I, you know, being pressed by Master Cody. You know, it seems like Master Cody was fortunate to actually confront both these dudes and ask them if they you know about who knocked down Tupac. You know, and it's crazy how Master was actually face to face with the dude who had dumped on Tupac. But uh, let me know what y'all think. Make sure y'all don't forget to comment and like, y'all. Peace.